Hello and welcome back to Chiefsman's Corner. This is a recorded version once again this week, uh, due to the wife getting home in just a little bit. Uh, I will hopefully be around when this goes live at 9 p.m. Eastern time for comments and discussion. I am your host, Coach One of us, one of the leadership team here in the WFL and the coach of the Arizona Cardinals. On this show, we're going to talk playoff races for those that are going to the playoffs and draft for those that aren't going to the playoffs. <clears throat> we'll also discuss some gameplay stuff to look out for in the playoffs and going forward into Season 7 as well. Uh, there will be no players of the podcast, no scores to go over this week, but hopefully the playoff talk and the draft talk will be enough. We also do have, at the last minute, uh, we do have a surprise Ask the Chief segment. Uh, if you're watching the recording of this, thank you for watching. Any and all support is appreciated. Without you guys, the WFL doesn't exist. The first thing I'm going to talk about, as always, is the WFL's incentive plan. This plan allows you to get some perks that aren't available for every member simply by doing extracurricular activities that involve WFL. Anything from Twitter slash X to articles on the Neon Sports site to commenting or participating in the show, even chatting in Discord can earn you experience points. Anything that makes the WFL a more immersive experience and increases its presence in the Madden community can earn you some sort of credit. Link to the incentive plan is available using the command slash incentive plan. That is all one word, slash incentive plan in Discord. There's a link inside the document that gets you the form you need to fill out at season's end to get credit for your incentive points that you have earned during the season for any of those extracurricular activities. <clears throat> Excuse me. The next thing to talk about is our form as the chief. Use this form between the episodes during the week to submit any questions you have, and I'll answer them during the show, giving you credit for the question. It's an easy way to build up incentive points and provide extra content for the podcast. Use the command slash ask the chief. That is all one word slash ask the chief to pull up the form in Discord. Another thing to keep in mind as we are at the season's end is the end of season survey. Please use this to tell us what you like and more importantly what you don't like about the WFL right now. I respond via DM to every survey and am the only one who reads them. Speak your mind and let's discuss on how to make WFL a better place for everyone. To get that form, you can type slash WFL survey. That is all one word again. Slash WFL survey in Discord can get you that document. And one more thing to talk about, uh, our off-season regiment program will probably kick off here in probably a week or two, uh, real time, as we get into the off-season and we start getting into free agency uh, for Season 6 and the, the draft for the end of Season 6 going into Season 7. Uh, if you're a new person or you just want to refresh yourselves on the ORP program, I just said ORP and then program, uh, you can type in slash off-season program, that is all one word, slash off-season program in Discord, and that will get you the form, or that will get you the idea of what you need to do as far as filling out forms. There's ORP, form, ORP forms you can fill out for all our off-season programs, and that is found by using slash ORP form. Again, all one word, slash ORP form, and that can allow you to basically declare what you want to do for your off-season regimen program. It's a good program. It's un it's fairly unique to WFL. Um, get a look at it using the ter using the command off-season program slash off-season program. And then if you want to fill out for anything once the off-season starts, slash ORP form and fill out one form for each thing you want of the off-season program. There are a certain number of points you get. Everybody gets 10. Some people get more based on incentives. You can also get more based on free agency agents that sign with other teams. All of that is detailed in the off-season program document. With housekeeping out of the way, let's take a look at playoffs and draft. With playoffs right around the corner, let's bring up our Neon Sports site right here to go over what we see as far as the AFC and the NFC right now. And in the AFC, it is pretty much locked down the top seven seeds. There is still a potential fight. I'm not sure how the seeding is going to fall between the Jets and the Dolphins there. The Dolphins could win. And if the Jets lose, obviously that would create some type of tiebreaker situation. Jets are pretty much a win and end type of squad right now. If they win their game this week in week set week 18, excuse me, uh, they will be in the playoffs no matter what. I'm going to look as it at, at it as it sits right now, with Buffalo being the one seed, Jacksonville being the two, excuse me, 
uh, the Chargers being the three, Browns being the four, and then your wild cards are a 12 and five wild card team. That is ridiculous. 11 and six wild card team, also ridiculous. Um, and then you see nine and seven uh, Jets there. So that would mean that Meat Boy and the Buffalo Bills would get the number one seed in the bye during the first round of the playoffs. Uh, Jacksonville would take on the Jets. Uh, no offense, Jets, you've had a really good season, but I don't think you can beat the Jaguars there. I think the Jacksonville Jaguars would advance. <clears throat> you have the Chargers playing against the Denver Broncos, so that would be another AFC West matchup. And that's one I think I would actually lean towards Denver there. I think they're playing really good football right now, not to knock the Chargers in any way, shape, or form, but I think they're playing really good football right now. I think they've they've figured out some run game with Javante Williams. They've got a lot of good pass or they've got a lot of good receivers, excuse me. Russell Wilson is past his prime, but he can still get it done in a playoff scenario in, in Madden. Uh, I think the Denver Broncos could actually upset the Chargers potentially uh, if that holds serve. And then the four five seed, <clears throat> new guy Manny. And the uh, Cleveland Browns, who make it by default because the AFC North staunchly refused to have any good teams, uh, versus the Indianapolis Colts and Juke, a former WFL Bowl finalist. Uh, I don't think Manny's going to have the horses to beat Jonathan Taylor and the Indianapolis Colts. So I see the Colts winning there, and that takes me two upsets technically with the five seed and the six seed winning, uh, which means that of the seeds remaining, Denver would go to Buffalo. This is where your story, Cinderella story, ends, unfortunately, Denver, uh, as <clears throat> you would get ousted by the Buffalo Bills. Meat Boy is a tough opponent to, to face, uh, whether he's at home or away. He's 14-2 and for a reason. Uh, Denver has a puncher's chance, but I just think Buffalo is too tough and advances. And then <clears throat> you have Jacksonville uh, playing against the Colts, I do believe. I believe that would be right. Yeah, Jacksonville against the Colts. Uh, that's going to be another tough matchup in my prediction based on the fact that they're AFC South uh, opponents. So this will be the third time they've matched up. I'm not sure who's won the previous two in this one. I didn't do any research in that regard. Uh, but I will take Juke and the playoff experience of him and the Colts versus uh, Chess KE, even though Chess KE is a really good user as evidenced by his record. Uh, I will take Indy in the upset, which means that Meat Boy versus Juke in the AFC uh, Conference Final. Uh, uh, sorry, Juke. I think this is where your story ends. I think Meat Boy is just the team of destiny right now with the Buffalo Bills. And I think Buffalo comes out of the AFC uh, with two wins against two tough opponents to earn the AFC Championship berth. And in the NFC, it is now officially locked up <clears throat> with the loss of Atlanta this week to the New Orleans Saints. The Air, the Atlanta Falcons, excuse me, fall to 9-8, and eight, and they are out of the playoff picture. At 9-8, and eight, they're out of the playoff picture. That is ridiculous. Um, but that is the way it is in the NFC, which has a top-heavy setup. Minnesota is currently the one seed, but that could flip based on how Carolina and Seattle do. Uh, I know Seattle has Arizona. That should be a simulation win, which means they'd bump to 13-4, and four, so it could be a, an issue of seeding. Uh, but again, I'm going to do like I did with the AFC, and I'm going to take it as is, face value. Minnesota's the one uh, out of the, a or excuse me, the NFC North. Carolina is the South uh, two seed. Uh, Seattle is the West three seed, and the Giants at 11-6 are the four seed out of the East. And then you have New Orleans, Washington and the Commanders and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, all making the playoffs as wild card teams. Ten and six is a wild card team. That's that's ridiculous. <clears throat> to have to get double digit wins to even make the playoffs is is just dumb beyond words. But that is the way it is in the NFC, and that means that Minnesota would get the bye. Carolina would face Tampa Bay in a battle of two and seven, and I do believe they split the season series. So this is kind of the rubber match. And even though Bryce Young is having an MVP-type season, I think Tampa might get their number in the playoffs. I don't know if Carolina has the playmakers uh, to keep Bryce Young afloat. Bryce Young has been getting the ball out relatively quickly to his playmakers where he can, but he don't have. He Bryce Young does not have a lot of skills out there on the outside, whereas Tampa Bay has guys like Mike Evans, has Chris Godwin. Um, you have a lot of weapons there. 
uh, in Tampa. The better quarterback is Bryce Young, uh, but I think Tampa has a more well-rounded offense, and I think they do just enough to squeak past Carolina. There she's some bulletin board material, Panthers. Uh, we got the three seed Carol, or excuse me, Seattle, and the six seed Washington. And I think this is another one that's going to come down to the wire, but I'm going to give the edge to the team with the better seed here, and I'm going to give it to Polio in a very tight contest, thinking like it's going to be within a field goal, I'm feeling like, as long as Washington doesn't turn the ball over because the Seattle Seahawks are very a, a very turnover-hungry group. If Washington can keep out of the turnover game and not give Seattle extra possessions, I think it's a close game. I don't know if Washington has the horses to match up with Seattle just yet. Seattle made a ton of trades to get basically a dream team together, uh, and I think they'll at least make it through one round, the wild card round, and advance. And then you have the Giants and the Saints. The Saints have been airing it out all season long with Chris Olave leading the league with over 2,000 yards receiving, Derek Carr over 5,200 yards passing. It's been ridiculous offense from the Saints, unlike in real life. Kendro goes against Cly and the Giants, though, and Cly is known for user in the corner. I could see him covering Olave more often than not, especially in need to have downs. I think in this particular scenario, though, I think Carr and the Saints pull out the dub due to the overwhelming offense. Cly is not a guy who's going to come from behind. If New Orleans can pack some big plays in early, I think Cly is going to be on the back foot and have a tough time coming back, especially <clears throat> I do believe he's out Saquon Barkley, which means he is coming in even wo more wounded than normal. Uh, so give me the Saints against the Giants in a, in a tough matchup, but I think Cly just needs an extra year to get some extra horses uh, in New York to get the G-men going the right direction, even though he's 11 and 6. Uh, I think he can do better with some more help behind him in year 2 slash season 7. Uh, so I've got the Saints, the Seahawks, and the Bucks advancing, which means the Bucks will take on the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, both teams are known for some offense, especially Rim and the Vikings. Uh, they have Justin Jefferson. I do believe they have Justin Jefferson. In real life, they don't. But in, re in this game, I believe they have Justin Jefferson. Uh, I think Minnesota will, if, if it turns out that Tampa goes to Minnesota, I think Minnesota has a solid day and basically uh, escorts Tampa out of the playoffs by 10 to 14 points. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game because Minnesota don't play no defense. If Tampa can hold Minnesota under, say, 24 points, I think they've got a puncher's chance. I just don't see Minnesota being held under 24 points, and I think Minnesota can do just enough to keep Tampa at that 24-point mark and then outscore them, basically. So give me Minnesota over Tampa in my prediction spread. Then that means Seattle's going to be playing the Saints. I I I got I got to give it to the Saints here. I mean, it's it's going to be it's going to be irresistible force meets a movable object. The Seattle Seahawks have a great secondary that love to go and get picks. The Saints have elite wide receiver play in Chris Olave and that elite quarterback play in Derek Carr. So it's who blinks first, and I think uh, I think the Saints will ultimately pull it out and beat Seattle. I think it's going to be a close game. I think it's going to be within three to seven points, but I think New Orleans comes through late and advances to the NFC title game as a former WFL Bowl winner, Kendro is. Uh, and so essentially we have Rim versus Kendro, Saints versus Vikings in the final. And I think unlike in real life, say circa 2009, 2010, uh, when the Saints won in overtime in real life, I don't think that happens here. I think it's more like the Minneapolis miracle, although not needing a miracle. I think Minnesota can beat New Orleans handedly as far from offensive standpoint. If it comes down to where it's Minnesota and New Orleans, I will almost guarantee you both teams will score 40 points. I can almost guarantee it. I think Minnesota has more horses overall, and I think they eke it out, say, in a very high-scoring 49-45 uh, maybe even get into the 50s, but I'll say for like 49-45, 49-42, somewhere in that range. But Minnesota pulls it out. And so the WFL Bowl, as I predict it, will be the Minnesota Vikings versus Meek Boy and the Bills. And I have to tell you, 
Uh, I think Meat Boy is on a mission uh, after returning to the WFL this season. Uh, I think he wants to set a precedent, and I want to see, I think he wants to make a statement. And if he ends, whoever he faces, whether it's the Vikings, as I predict, or whether it's any other team in the NFC, I think he's going to try and make an example of you. Uh, I see the Bills winning. I see the Bills winning fairly easily. And I think Meek Boy puts his second banner uh, into the WFL rafters, uh, this time with the Bills, uh, as WFL Bowl 6 champions. And with that, that is my predictions for the playoffs. Now we move on to the other team's playoffs, the draft. So at this point, I'll scroll down and we'll look at some of the teams. I'm going to have to bounce around the site a little bit, so you have to forgive me a little bit. But essentially what we're going to start with is the Kansas City Chiefs. Poor Banshee Man has had a rough first season in Kansas City. Uh, going 2-14 and 14 and earning himself the number one pick overall. And I have a question, which is spoiling it a little bit for Ask the Chief, that deals with the number one pick. I could see... I, th I think of all things, I think, honestly, uh, the Chiefs need playmakers on the outside. They have Travis Kelsey, and he really leans on Travis Kelsey, just like the Chiefs do in real life. But they need a weapon on the outside. They need some kind of wide receiver help. And I think with that first overall pick, I could see uh, potentially maybe a trade out because the Chiefs are loaded for bear. Uh, but I think more than likely they keep this pick and I feel like they go wide receiver. I could see them taking the top, my top-rated prospect on the big board, uh, which is Willie Watson, who is a round one projected guy with great athleticism. He's not the fastest guy on the board, uh, but he's basically the most well-rounded player on the board. Uh, if you're wanting elite speed, though, maybe you want to go a little smaller, you could go with Tyler Forsett, who's got some great speed and some decent measurables. He's not far off of Willie Watson. <clears throat> at 5'8", 185, he kind of mimics that uh, Tyreek Hill size speed ratio, maybe. Maybe not the speed so much. Uh, if Far Forsett is a good combine, uh, I could see the Chiefs going Forsett. I just see the Chiefs going wide receiver uh, with the top pick. Uh, and then with the second pick, we have the, I believe it's going to be between the Rams, the Cowboys, and the Steelers. So we have Rams, Cowboys, Steelers at 2, 3, and 4. So I'm going to start with the Rams. The Rams take the they make the easiest pick on uh, available. The, they make the best pick based on their needs, which is they need everything. <laughs> they literally need everything. So um, any pick they make, as long as it's a pick that they feel comfortable with, is a good pick more than likely. Uh, to give you an idea, I mean they could go. Really, they don't want to go quarterback. Is about the only thing they don't want to go. They have a guy in Greg Hoffman who's their rookie carryover from the previous regime. So they probably won't draft quarterback, I wouldn't think. Uh, I could see them going wide receiver because other than Cooper Cup, who's getting up there in age, they really don't have a lot of weapons. They could go tight end. They could go with Demarius Harris. They could go maybe if they want to go down the board a little bit and go by my big board, they could go with Rashad Barnes. Uh, they could go if they want. They, may, they could even go Devontae Collier. I mean, all those tight ends would be good picks. They could even go O-line, but at pick number two, two to four, I don't see them going O-line. Maybe they go defense because they definitely could use some defensive help. I could see them taking a corner, maybe like a Connor Woods or a Pierre Callahan up there. Uh, I could also see them taking a safety, uh, maybe like <clears throat> uh, Philip Porter, who's rated pretty high on my board, or Tayshawn Austin, who is a guy I like at strong safety. He may not be as fast, but he's definitely a solid overall player. Literally anything the Rams look at and pick is going to be an upgrade at whatever position they whatever whatever they want to do. That's 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 a good pick. I mean, it, literally any pick they make, even if they pick fourth, literally anybody on the board that's up there in the top end is going to improve that team. So just Coach TST who just came in, he's an old guy from WFL days from the old school WFL from Madden 16 to 20. Uh, he's familiar with the Rams. He had the Rams before. Of course, they weren't this bad. Um, but he's got a couple of playmakers in Aaron Donald and Cooper Cup that are aging out. 
Uh, he just needs youth to fill out that roster. I don't know if he goes edge because he's got a guy like a Byron Young who's out there. Um, he's got, uh, I believe, Ernest Jones, I believe is the guy's name, at middle linebacker. Um, so I think anything where he sees like he can uh, upgrade, he might go edge rusher, outside linebacker. Uh, but I think corner's a good pick. I think safety's a good pick. Uh, I think defensive line could be a good pick if he sees one of value. Really, literally anything he takes will be a benefit. Even offensive line, which I think is a little bit of a reach at two, even at four. But if he feels like he needs it and it helps his team out, it's it's an improvement. Trust me. I know that Rams roster fairly well. It's bad. It's really bad. So anything he can do to help it will be, will be immense. Uh, as we jump in to uh, – oh, let me jump in here. As we jump on to the next team on the docket, which is the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys are a bit of an interesting bunch because they do have a lot of talent. I don't know if they're in a cap crunch situation, um, but I could see them uh, going with, and I'm kind of trying to look to see, they've got Dak Prescott on the, on the block. Maybe they go quarterback. Maybe they try to kind of reset uh, if they can get rid of Prescott, whether it's through a cut or through a trade. Maybe they go quarterback. I They've traded for Marquise Brown. They've got C.D. Lamb. they got Brandon Cooks. they got a lot of speed out there on the outside, but they don't have anybody really that he feels comfortable throwing them the ball. Maybe they go that route. Offensive line is pretty well stacked, although it is getting a little long in the tooth with Zach Martin and Tyron Smith. Uh, on defense, you've got Micah Parsons, who I think he mentioned briefly trading, but he shouldn't. He should keep that guy. Uh, you've got studs in the back end. Maybe you improve at corner because uh, Stephon Gilmore is not going to get any younger. you got Trayvon Diggs back there. You've also got Byron Jones, who's going to age out and be somebody you probably let go. Maybe you look at going corner. Uh, you've got a pretty solid secondary. The team is well constructed for the most part. I'm not sure their cap situation again. Uh, but probably looking at this, maybe they look outside linebacker. Uh, so like a guy, say like a... Uh, Kashim Jones could be a good pick for them on the outside as a pass coverage guy. Uh, Eli Crompton or Greg Bigby could be a guy that would be a good thing as a power rusher or a run stopper. Uh, on the outside, if they want to go pass coverage, they could go to Marcus Keaton, which would be a little bit of a reach at third overall. But maybe that's a guy they look at and go, hey, this is our guy. If they want to go middle linebacker. The only guy I could conceivably see taking as far as my big board would be Ricky Thomas, but he's a little bit small to go at third overall at 5'11", 230, I think. He's got great athleticism, though. Uh, but at third overall, I think that's a bit of a reach. I could Again, I could see them going corner, maybe going with whoever's left out of Woods or Callahan. Uh, maybe they look at Roman Middleton or George, George Womack or Tim Dyson down here in these, in these corners. Or maybe they just kind of go off the beaten path and pick up Jaden Reed, who's my third-rated corner, I believe. Um, so th there's options there. It just depends on their cap situation. It's going to be kind of fluid. Um, but if they if they drop Dak Prescott, they are definitely going quarterback. And if they go quarterback, I can see them going with an Artie Hill, who's rated like stupidly high on my board. Uh, but I can see them also going with Reggie Nance, who's more of a statuesque. Uh, drop back passer with a big big arm so maybe if they want to get away from that mobility and stick to more pocket passing they go with Reggie Nance that's again if they get rid of Dak Prescott that's kind of uh, if they get rid of Dak I, could, I definitely see them going quarterback if they don't I could see them going defensive line maybe but more than likely outside linebacker I just don't know if the value is there at pick three um, next up would be the uh, I believe it was the Pittsburgh Steelers I can almost guarantee you what the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to do. If they don't get a guy, if they don't get a guy via trade, they're going quarterback. They're going quarterback, and they're going mobile quarterback. So Reggie Nance is off the board here. I could see them going. Uh, Artie Hill would be their guy at four. If if they pick at four and Artie Hill is there, I think they sprint to the podium as quickly as humanly possible. And they take him. He's a phenomenal athlete. He's got good ratings across the board. Um, he's a great guy in open space. And I think Chilkey really likes those open space runners, uh, dual threat quarterbacks. Um, so he would be a perfect fit in that Steeler offense that would be getting revamped uh, in season two. I think I think it's almost no doubt that Pittsburgh goes quarterback. I know he's unhappy with Kenny Pickett. And Mitch Trubisky is definitely not the answer. Um, so that pretty much leaves that. Then we have, and I'm going to round out at the five win teams, 
I'm not going to go any farther than that, so I'm only going to go <clears throat> to, what, seven? Uh, you have Detroit, Houston, and New England. I'm going to start with Houston, and I think Houston's in the same boat as the Rams are. I think just about anything short of edge would be a benefit. Uh, I could see them going offensive line. I think protecting C.J. Stroud would be a nice idea. I don't know what kind of weapons they have, so let's kind of get a look real quick at the Texans to kind of gander what they have. And again, obviously, this is pre-free agency, so anything can happen in free agency. Uh, but I could see them going, I could truly see them going with a wide receiver, a, di a difference maker. So somebody like uh, a Willie Watson, if they're available, Kelvin Whitfield is a big physical guy. If they want to go big and physical, he's a little slower though. If they want to go speed and he's available, Tyler Forsett could be a guy. Uh, maybe they drop a little bit and go get a Geo Manning, even though he's rated a little bit lower in projection. He does have great speed, and we know anything about any Madden League in general, and specifically WFL, guys love the speed. Guys love fast guys. Speed kills uh, in this league. So I could see them going with Geo Manning, maybe even dropping down to uh, a Justin Stewart, even though he's not rated as high. But those are guys that I think they go get a weapon. Maybe they go tight end, but I feel like wide receiver would be a good fit for them. Uh, they could also potentially go with maybe a coverage linebacker that I mentioned earlier. As uh, far as the secondary, I feel like it's all right. Um, it could be better as well, so maybe they look there as well. Maybe they look at one of those big guys and say, hey, we're going to go get that. Uh, but ultimately, I think... Uh, I think they go playmaker or offensive line. I think they go wide receiver or offensive line uh, with pick number five. And then Detroit Lions, we'll go with them first. Uh, Detroit has a lot of weapons. Um, I don't know. I'm hoping that Det Fan can kind of figure it out in season seven slash season two of our, of our franchise. I don't know how he feels about Jared Goff. I don't know if he's used Hen Hendon Hooker. Uh, but otherwise, I know he's had a struggles with Goff at quarterback. The run game, I feel like, has been solid. Uh, tight end might be something he looks at, maybe, but he's got a decent bit of speed at tight end. He's got plenty of weapons at wide receiver. Uh, maybe he gets a third wide receiver to replace Marvin Jones. Uh, his offensive line is solid, minus injuries. Uh, he picked up Montez Sweat via trade. Uh, maybe, maybe linebacker would not be a bad idea. Maybe going linebacker, although he has a bunch of guys at linebacker right now. Um, corner yeah i think i think corner's gonna go quick in this draft so i think uh lions i know it took me a while to get there but whoever's left of connor woods pierre callahan uh Jaden reed george womack roman middleton tim dyson basically whoever you like that fits your scheme that's who you need to go get you need to get yourself a corner uh, because that corner room is pretty brutal. Cameron Sutton is your number one corner, and I don't have room to talk because my corner room sucks as well, but that's a pretty rough corner room right now, and you play in the NFC North with Rim, who loves to throw the ball, uh, Smash, who can run the ball pretty well and play some all right offense, uh, and then finally you have the Packers who, have, who need weapons as well. So getting coverage is not a bad idea. Uh, so going corner will help immensely. And then finally, the New England Patriots is who I'm going to have my last coverage on, which kind of is fitting whenever I get to ask the Chief. Um, so we have, let's take a look see at their depth chart. Is Mac Jones the answer? I don't know. Um, I, tight end. If it were me, I mean tight end or wide receiver. A playmaker on the outside would be a huge boost uh, to Mac Jones, if he indeed sticks with Mac Jones. There's not a lot of playmaking out here outside of maybe a Taekwon Thornton at 96 speed who needs some work on his route running. Maybe you go pick up a guy immediately to help and je jettison uh, Devontae Parker or Kendrick Bourne out of, out of the, off the lineup. Uh, maybe you look at defensive line. Maybe you look at linebackers. Maybe you look at corners. Uh, but I think honestly, if it were me, I would definitely go with either a tight end, uh, or a wide receiver. And I'd probably go tight end at this point. Cause at this point in my mock draft, quote unquote, not a lot of tight ends come off the board. So anyone left of Demarius Harris or Devonte Collier would be excellent picks at this point. Uh, could also drop down the board a little bit and maybe pick up a Zach Hardy. If you want to get a guy like that, who's rated pretty high on my board, or you can go grab Jason Peterson, who is really rated pretty high on my board right there with Demarius Harris, who's rated the top tight end. 
Uh, so there's lots of depth here at the tight end spot. There's lots of guys that rank pretty high in the BASQ. Uh, so those guys can definitely, definitely get the job done uh, for the New England Patriots going into year two of Madden 24 slash season seven of WFL. And that kind of covers it for my draft coverage for the teams, at least seven or eight teams uh, that are going to be picking near the top in the WFL draft coming up in hopefully just a few weeks, a week or two maybe just away. Uh, after that, we have, as far as this show goes, Ask the Chief. And we actually had a question for Ask the Chief. Let me go ahead and pull it up real quick. Oh, nope, I got to get it. All right, forgive the jump cut, but I got Austin Jackson of the Patriots here with uh, two questions. Uh, first one, who would be your pick for MVP? Spoiler, I have access to the media room, so I know who's going to be voted for MVP. Um... <laughs> Or at least I, I, based on what they've talked about, um, I would love to toot the horn for my guy Kyler Murray because I think without him, the Arizona Cardinals would be a three-win football team at best. Um, he's accounted for all, I believe, at least forty, if not, well, forty or more touchdowns on the season between his legs and his arm, uh, and he's basically carried the team to relevance. Honestly, he's been a, a real good player. Uh, but unfortunately, he's not going to get MVP because he doesn't put up any juicy numbers like some of the other guys do. Uh, I feel like Derek Carr is an excellent candidate uh, because he's leading the league in passing. Uh, Jonathan Taylor could sneakily win it uh, with his with his game. Also, Chris Olave could sneakily win it. I think it's going to be a quarterback though, and I think uh, they're going to. I I think I feel like Bryce Young probably is going to get it. Um, just to kind of give you an idea of Bryce Young's. Uh, skill set here uh, as I bring it up let me go ahead and pull it up real quick like Carolina there we go let's get him pulled up yep I'll show you All right, there he is so Bryce Young on the year let me go ahead and pull it up so you guys can see I'm gonna pull up his stats real quick um, career stats I'll just do career stats so you have he's He's got over over 66% completion percentage, 4,380 yards, 38 touchdowns to 13 interceptions. He is pretty much the reason his team uh, is is in the playoffs is Bryce Young. Bryce Young has been a monster this year. Um, so definitely, I feel like with everything on the board and everything here, I think Bryce Young not only wins the MVP, I think he wins Offensive Rookie of the Year as well. Um could I see other folks get it? Yeah, but I think I think folks uh, in the media room like Bryce Young. They like his numbers, and I can't blame them. Um, again, I'd like to. I'd, I'd love to pitch my guy, but uh, my my guy hasn't had a good enough year. Unfortunately, he hasn't he hasn't produced enough wow factor uh, for MVP voting. Unfortunately, but I think uh, Derek Carr should get some honorable mention and get some love. I think Chris Olave deserves some love. And I think Jonathan Taylor deserves some love too as the leading rusher, receiver, and quarterback, a passing quarterback. Uh, I think they all deserve some love, but I think ultimately uh, Bryce Young, it's Bryce Young's to lose uh, coming up here. And then the other question, as I have to go back and pull it up, is uh, do you think, oh, got to scroll over, do you think we can see a trade happen for the number one overall pick? That kind of goes back to the Kansas City Chiefs, um, who currently have the number one overall pick and could potentially have a cap situation where they don't want to draft first overall based on the fact that their rookie reserve is higher, uh, which eats up more of their available cap to sign free agents if they so desire, if they even can. Um, I think a scenario could exist where Kansas City trades the pick. It depends on the haul they get back. I would say for the record, if I were the Chiefs wanting to deal this, the minimum I would accept is another first in this draft. I want to move down. I would not want to move out of it. Uh, and a player, particularly at the wide receiver position, that's a young game breaker. Somebody I don't have to sign for a couple of years at least that has the ability to break a game open. Uh, somebody that's on a nice team-friendly contract, meaning a rookie-level deal. Uh I don't know right off the top of my head of any players that would fit that bill, but if it were me and the Chiefs, if I were the Chiefs right now sitting on the number one pick, knowing the cap situation as well as I possibly can, which is not a lot to be fair, um, I think you've got to you've got to move down, maybe accrue a couple extra picks in this draft or the next one, 
Uh, but you most definitely got to get a playmaker that's on a rookie deal so that way you can kind of alleviate some cap issues and help out that wide receiver room and help out Patrick Mahomes. I think that's where Banshee's been struggling is that just like the Chiefs, uh, if Kelsey isn't lighting it up, then the Chiefs just can't do anything. And I think Banshee's having that problem in, in game right now. I think uh, if he can't see if he can't get Kelsey, he can't get anybody. And I think he just needs some help to get some – he needs some separation playmakers is what he needs. He needs some big-time playmakers. Uh, so I think that ultimately the, – could the pick be traded? Yeah, any pick can be traded in WFL. I think I wouldn't if I were the Chiefs. I think I would just take the best player available if I have the cap space for it and just groom that player for four years with Patrick Mahomes, especially if it's somebody on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, that would be what I would do. I would get myself the best playmaker I feel like I could grab do my homework on any and all wide receivers at the top end of that draft. Maybe even do some research on tight ends because Travis Kelsey's not getting any younger. Um, but it's got to be a playmaker for Mahomes. It just has to be uh, because right now he needs that help. Uh, and with that, we are done with the show. We are done with Ask the Chief segment. So as usual, we're going to kick it to the outro uh, by saying thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate it. The WFL appreciates it. And we hope you are entertained by the show. Let us know by throwing us a like, subscribe, or leaving comments. Any and all feedback, good and bad, is appreciated. Until next Monday, folks, I know today is Tuesday, but next Monday we'll be back and we should be live. Uh, but until then, the corner is closed.